yourself comfortable. We have uh, a lot of questions to get through. I'm going to start off selfishly and rattle down the line, if that's okay. Andy, I'm going to start with you, oh if that's all right. Um, you've, you've been uh, involved in both sides of this, of course, this whole journey of, of being behind the camera and in front of it. What are you going to take away from, from this experience then, from being able to do both sides of this thing? Um, it really is, uh, it, it's, it's very much, this whole journey for me has extra been extraordinary, um, both as a, a working on a, a, a new technology. Again, it, this kind of goes back to where, where Pete comes from as a filmmaker and his desire to push the envelope and to turn, you know, reach a point in, in filmmaking where visual effects suddenly becomes character. Um, so the whole performance capture journey has been extraordinary from that point of view. But then also to be asked to, to direct the second unit was an, an enormous shock, but... Um, it, it really speaks to Pete's understanding of uh, and, and the way that he collaborates with all of all of the cast members and all of the crew and as a natural leader and as a brilliant filmmaker. He, but his, he, you know, just in terms Sorry, of being, right. you know, without uh, over 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 overselling him because he doesn't need selling really. But um, <laughs> but he is. His, his virtues are that he is the most incredibly generous human being. And I think to learn from a director who's an incredibly generous human being, you couldn't ever want a better mental I teacher. I think I'm going to have to hire, hire you again. And <laughs> <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> no, I can't afford him now. No. Um, Lee, you kind of steal the show with your, with your, uh, your oh. horseback uh, entry in this sort of thing. Um, it kind of adds back. to his... Sorry, elk elk back. back, yeah. Uh, it, it kind of adds to his whole kind of presence and grandeur, doesn't it? Is that fun to kind of play with, to kind of even make him even more kind of powerful and grand? Uh, I mean, uh, on set, that is basically, okay, put on this blonde wig, put on this silver armor, and you're going to sit here, and I'm like, okay, what's, what's next? And he goes, you're going to ride an elk into a battle of five armies, and there'll be orcs here, and, and you know, just kind of go for it. Swing your sword around, and... Um, uh, <laughs> And, uh, and, then, <laughs> and, then, and then show up last night and I watched the movie back and it's just extraordinary. This you know, battle is just massive and, um, and, uh, and somehow I find myself in it. Um, Orlando, yeah. how are you, sir? Hello, um, you? Uh, This must have been an emotional journey for you from, from, being, you know, from being there across the, the kind of two, two epics. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's been a, it's been a crazy, crazy to think that I was 21 when I got cast and moved out to New Zealand. I'm 37 now, so um, puts it slightly into perspective. But yeah, it's um, it is. It's bittersweet. It's there's. Um, I hope Pete feels a huge sense of achievement at this point because I'm feeling a little bit of that, and very grateful to just have been on the ride, really. Evangeline, what a character. She has no fear. She fears nothing. Would you agree? I totally disagree. <laughs> I think that she's terrified of everything and that she overcomes those fears and does it anyway. She hides it brilliantly. Oh, great. You Good. hide it. <laughs> That's what elves are supposed to do. <laughs> they don't show anything on the outside. It's all inside. Uh, Richard, um, what, what a journey he goes on I in this film. Was, was, that, was that great to be able to take him kind of to those depths? Yeah, I'm trying to get through this press tour without repeating the word journey or story arc, but really, uh, <laughs> Thorin has such an interesting story arc to play over three movies and when d does one ever get the opportunity to play a single story through through three pieces and you know the material is incredible Tolkien is incredible and the screenplay is absolutely fantastic I was given some amazing dialogue to say which I'm very very grateful for good answer Richard <laughs> Peter mm. so you've said that you um, you have a responsibility with these films um, and these characters I guess as well how do you look on that responsibility now, now that it's, it's kind of finished and you've delivered these stories? I don't have the responsibility anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can go to the beach. Um, uh, but, uh, um, As you can tell, he does that a lot. <laughs> but, but no, I, I mean, any, any film is a responsibility because you're spending, you know, you're spending money that's not yours that, and, 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 you know, so you've got to be responsible for that. You, I mean, I also feel very responsible for the fact that you're trying to entertain people and... Um, you know, and for me, utter failure is, is to make a film that people go to and they pay their money to go see and, and they don't like. And so, you know, from that point of view, I'm sure there are people that have seen these films that they don't, that they don't like, like them. But the majority of people, certainly from, from what we can see, the majority of people have um, gone and enjoyed them, which is, you know, for me, that's, that's, that's why, 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 why we do what we do, isn't it? To, um, mm -hmm. to give people a good mm -hmm. time at the movies. So, yeah. Martin, hello. What? <laughs> Christ. 
So rude. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I've, got to get, I've got to get down the line and speed it up a bit. Um, not many times an actor gets a chance to revisit a character on more than one occasion. Yes. Um, what does that allow you to do then as an actor? Does it uh, kind of allow you more freedom or is it an easier or harder opportunity as an actor? Well, um, it, it gives you the opportunity to actually grow and expand uh, inside what you're doing. So I, I love to expand inside Bilbo <laughs> um, over a course of three years. What? And um, <laughs> but that's the truth. And I'm only telling the truth and now I'm being persecuted for it. <laughs> and I think we know another man that happened to, don't we? <laughs> Um, no, but we... we Jesus Christ. This is not the time or the place. No, I'm just saying that within that... Yeah, we all have... <laughs> a long time. I was going to be so good on this. Uh, we, yeah, we have a long time to play and discover things that our characters do. We don't just have five minutes. You have a long time to sort of play this. And if, you're not, if it's not your time to... Because I was always having the conversation with Peter... When do I get to be angry? <laughs> you know, like when do I get to sort of show that different side? And he would always be saying, it's coming, it's coming. You know, don't worry, pace yourself, you know. Um, exactly. You have to shape it out. And what you learn is to pace yourself and you learn to, um, yeah, you learn patience, basically. That that time though, where you want to play that and you want to show that about that character, it will come. Um, but you just have to wait. And it's, yeah, it's, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Sir Ian very McKellen. Good, very good answer. Thanks very much. No, I thought Sir I Sir Ian, can I, um, yeah. are you finished, Martin? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, Ian McKellen, do you think you'll ever say goodbye, farewell to Gandalf? <laughs> uh, do you want me to sh I'll shout. He's a, he's oh, well, you see, the thing is, no, I, we, well, I say goodbye to Gandalf in 2000 uh, when I left New Zealand. Uh, well, here we are, 2014. It goes on and on and on. But and, and, uh, it, <laughs> and, and, and has, has, has been the blessing of my professional life. Uh, I'm like all of the actors, we think we are so bloody lucky. There's nothing about luck in the making of the films, of course, that, that's, that's the, the, the planning of the brilliance, but the chance that, that we were selected, um, well, wonderfully, <laughs> wonderful. But I, th I was just impressed last night by, by, by the age of, of, of the kids who'd, who'd slept out all night to, to, mm -hmm. to come and uh, wish us well. And some of them weren't born in the last century when we, we started. Mm -hmm. Not born. So, uh, mm. our work is part of their lives. And, you know, what are we doing it for other than to have an effect? And that the, mm. the effect c could be that crucial to them. And that they're now going to show these films to their own kids. To, to, to have been involved in, in films that are now classics is overwhelming. You can't take any credit for it, but it, it's mm. just... Uh, uh, happened and um, I just said, so in the end uh, it's not the end it, 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 it's the beginning now as people uh, see the film and then we'll want to see the six of them mm. and that'll be a whole other new experience that none of us ha has been able to have until this, this last Hobbit was made Thank you. 24 hours of joy <laughs> 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 but we are. I mean, ju just to, just to expand very slightly on w what something that Ian was saying. I mean, I was, you know, I was just thinking last night actually that we we're about three or four years away from the generation that will see these films, <coughs> the six movies, in the order that they should see them, in the story order rather than the mm. order they were shot. Because you know, children that are too young now, like th like three years old, four years old, five years old, too young to see these films. In a few years, a, a very short time, they'll be able to start to see them, and hopefully, they'll see them from the f from the Hobbit. One through to, to the the Return of the King. So so we're very soon we're not going to have this sort of back to front thing. It'll be like it'll it'll exist as a as the six film, yes. um, you know you know story that it should be. So, yeah. Was that what you planned from the start? Well, not at the Lord of the Rings. I didn't know I was going to do the Hobbit, but um, but when we knew we were going to do the Hobbit, um, we were always thinking of of the of the the full the full arc of the story because there's a lot of stuff in the Hobbit that we did. That we planted, which is designed to, you know, for the, the people that do finally see it in the in the correct order, it'll make sense. Mm. Um, can I can hopefully. I bring in Philippa um, just to the other side of, of Serene? Hi, Philippa. Hi. Um, I mean, all the foundations were here in terms of, you know, you, you kind of th with this, the the films that had gone before this. But th does that make it easier in terms of kind of knowing where the end point is for you in, ha in terms of this final ha film? having done the um, the Lord of the Rings first? You mean? Yeah. Definitely. Um, I think it was luck that we actually did, I think, those films first because I think we would have made a very different Hobbit if mm. we'd started with The Hobbit, probably more of a children's tale. 
Um, and, um, and uh, you know, not to say that that would have been necessarily a bad thing, but we always knew, as Peter said, that these were going to be set against the backdrop of films that were already in existence. And what I do love now is that we've seen, for example, the relationship of Gandalf and Galadriel and that she comes to save him. And so when she's told in Fellowship of the Ring that he has died, it's going to play in a completely different way. Um, so that's the experience that um, I think is going to be special for those people who can see it in, in that order. Thank you. Um, Luke. Oh, yeah. Bard the Bowman. Bard the Lonely Bowman. Everyone needs a Bowman to save them. Uh, was it fun playing the hero? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> he didn't, he, he wasn't a hero when I, when I first read, read him on the page. He was just the lowly bargeman. Um, <coughs> I know what he was capable of, of and what he ends up doing in the, in the third movie, but uh, when I started playing him all those years ago, um, he was uh, he was a father of three, without a wife, and uh, you know he had a long long journey ahead of him. Um, but um, it was very satisfying last night to actually see the final uh, the the look of that uh, rooftop sequence, which was the first thing I ever shot, wasn't it, Pete? Wow. Yes, it was. Yeah, he put me on yep. wires and sent me up a rooftop. Yeah. For four I mean, days. There's a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of scenes in this movie, this, this Battle of the Five Armies, that were shot four, four years ago, which is very strange for a film. Yeah. That was, my, that was four years ago. I must have shot that, yeah. So I've waited a long time to see that scene. That was a big <laughs> bell, wasn't it? Uh, Ryan, it's a very big bell, yeah. <laughs> Ryan, what a great character you have in Alfred. Um, he really helps to set the tone, I think, as well, throughout the film in terms of... <laughs> To he lower does. the tone, did you? He he does, yeah. Tone. Look, yeah. I wasn't going to say that, but um, but in terms of of, did you really enjoy kind of um, I guess kind of bringing him to life? And did you get to play with kind of how how you, where you took him? I guess in terms of how that. Yeah, character. I mean, it was very clear on the page. It was it, so he jumped off the page to me from the first reading of it. But um, yeah, we got to play around. I mean, it, it was a good opportunity for. Pete to be to <laughs> to play with me and bully me a bit <laughs> and throw eggs at me, so there was great fun to be had um, with him because he has a sort of foolish nature. He's a sort of dark clownish character, so I enjoyed um, being able to find the little bit of me that's a fool and the bit of me that is uh, vain. Quite a lot in there, actually. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> um, and the bit of me that is sort of bitter and greedy and all those things and exaggerate it and have fun being that person for a while. So it was a great treat Amen. to be him. <laughs> Thank you. And finally, Billy. Hello, sir, at the end. What a, a, a fitting end to this <laughs> wonderful journey um, that you, with this song, The Last Goodbye. How did that come about? Um, I, I, I suppose, um, I don't know, really. <laughs> I, I, I just know that I liked when I got the phone call and I got the chance to go back to New Zealand and, um, and to work with Fran and Philippa so closely uh, on writing the song. And um, yeah, it just it sort of organically happened, I suppose, because the song from Return of the King was in the trailer and then we started talking about doing the song and it sort of just sort of snowballed from there, you know? Well, it was, I mean, it was apart from, uh, you know, the fact that, that, that you've got a fantastic voice, uh, you know, uh, we, we, it was also, we, we felt just, just uh, as an emotional thing, it was almost like a handover <laughs> from the first three films to the, to the second set of three films. Yeah. That Pippin sort of jumps in there to, you know, at, yeah, you know, at the beginning of his story, effectively. It's I was like just thinking about that when you were talking about watching oh. it in the right order, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. it was great. It was so good to be down there, you know, in a different way. When you're used to being an actor and you leave it, to be there at the sort of last couple of weeks and the excitement of putting it all together, you know, and getting to sit with Pete and his, and his, as he edited it was, you know, a real, a real treat. It was great.